of sleep. This is why I explain to people at the end of the day, stop running your mouth so much. Stop carrying on, stop acting up. Now, all those jokes that you were making about the CCB, basically about how you're not going to court, all this stuff. This right here is a follow-up. So basically, we're taking a fellow by the name of Jamie Fernando Gonzalez to court. We're suing him for copyright infringements. <laughs> Tonight, Black Series Edition slash Crystal Edge Technology Screens goes on Rampage. I'm Danny reporting for Parte. Thank you for tuning in. Apologies for the cheesy intro, but I want to have a little fun. In classic form, Kenneth Bird, the scammer behind Black Series Edition and Crystal Edge Technology Screens, spent two and a half hours raging, raging against Crow, his wife, his children, and all of the other people that he's going to be bringing to court to clean their clock. So in this edition, we're going to take a look at Kim's fairy tale about the CCB, and we're going to dig into what the CCB actually does, who they are, and what is the truth behind Mr. Bird's claim. But before we get into the CCB, let's talk about the events that led up to that. So, Crow had actually sent over in a private message, okay, private chat, to Kenneth Bird, a copy of his little logo there, uh, which, you know, Kenneth Bird says he owns. He does not. You cannot own clip art like that for commercial use. You have to license it. You only own it or can use it if you're a private individual. And it actually says in there, you can use for personal use. But if you go to use for commercial purposes, generally you're gonna to have to license that because you'll never be able to copyright it otherwise. So all of that aside, what happened is Crow sent over a copy of the logo, which was not copyrighted, right? And he's telling Kenneth Bird that, you know, he either, you know, can he use it, he's gonna use it, whatever it is. Uh, but here's where things, when you really dig into things, this is where this really matters because that was a private communication sent in a chat to Kenneth Bird. Crow never made that public. Crow didn't put that out there in the public to begin with, right? That was just information. He was just taunting, you could say, uh, taunting Kenneth Bird. Kenneth Bird, in fact, is the one who publicized that. So you can't claim infringement whenever you're the one who actually published it. See, Crow never went to public. He never tried to use the logo in public. He never tried to sell anything under the logo in public. None of that. Ken, on the other hand, is the one, once again, who published it. And in doing so, okay, he violated Crow's rights. That's right. That's right, folks. He violated Crow's rights. How did he do that? Well, see, Crow lives in California, and there's a California Privacy Act that's out there. You cannot share digital communication from someone when you're a business like that without consent. It's just that simple. Think of it, if you send an email to your bank and then your bank publicized that email, you were complaining maybe about something that they did, and then they publicize that without your consent in the media, you can sue them. They cannot share your private communications like that without your consent. And that's the funny twist about this because Crow actually didn't violate anything, yet Ken did. Ken did. See, he gets so upset that he forgets that he's a business, not a private individual. He's a business. That came into a business, and as a business, he breached Crow's data, Crow's information. To add more insult to injury, Kenneth lives in a state that requires all-party, two-party consent. 
to share that kind of communication. And I grant you, Crow did not give him the consent to share that information. So the only person that's actually in violation here is Kenneth Bird and his business. See, he lets his emotions get the best of him and he makes mistakes because he forgets that he claims to be a business. But let's go further. So that just sets the tone for what actually happened and why this is so ridiculous. But then let's go into the CCB a bit. So what is the CCB? Well, the CCB is basically a tribunal board that's headed by three different ex experts within the copyright field. And what they do is they look at cases from the perspective of streamlined arbitration. Okay, it's not a legal forum. This is not federal court. But what they do is they look at cases to see if they can streamline a decision on copyright infringement and other copyright matters. Now, it's been four months since the original filing. Why haven't they picked this case up? Well, it's pretty simple. There's no there there. No infringement occurred. As a matter of fact, the only violation, again, was the violations of Ken sharing Crow's information. So that's why they have not picked up the case. You heard Ken say himself, they come back to him for more information because they're probably looking at this going, I'm sorry, where's the violation here? Where did he violate or infringe upon your copyright? And Ken's not able to provide that information. Now, <laughs> remind you, Ken had to pay $100. And I'm sure for him, he's thinking, you know, I'll spend the $100 just so I can plaster the CCB stuff all over the web page, all over his videos, to try to give some credence to what he's claiming. But the truth is, is that's not true. And all of that, you've heard him talk about how high the fines are going to be. $150,000 per instance. He's going to be $2.4 million in. And you see right here, the max that the tribunal will award is $30,000. That's the max. And that would be probably a pretty hefty uh, kind of infringement upon somebody's copyright. Not somebody sending them something through a private message. So they're never going to pick the case up. But here's the even funnier part. Even if they did pick it up, look at this. Crow can just opt out. Crow can say, nah, nah, not worth my time. I'm not going to do it. Which would mean that Kenneth Bird would then have to file a case in federal court which he's not going to do because he doesn't have the money to pursue that kind of copyright infringement case with the Fed. There's not enough damage that's, that's occurred to him. There's no damage, no violation, but he would never be able to prove the kind of damage to even make it worth going to federal court. So it's never going to happen. But what does he do? He comes out and he puts this BS out there Talking to Crow's wife, trying to get Crow's wife to divorce him before all of this goes down. Talking about his kids, how slimy of an individual must you be to do that? Especially when there's no real violation. And he knows it. It's all a fairy tale. So Crow, I would just flick your finger up at him and say, do it. And I know you've already done that, but I'm just saying, yeah. as a matter of fact, my recommendation would be, I would reach out to the California Regulatory Agency and report him for breaching your private data. Data that was privately communicated with his business that him as a business went out and plastered in videos. That's what I would do, but just a recommendation. But all of that being said, now he even mentioned us a few times in there. He doesn't he doesn't like to call us Partey, he likes to call us Danny. Like hearing my name offends me. <laughs> say my name, baby, say my name. Uh, it doesn't offend me. What you're looking at is the death throes of a scam operation that's been running for years. And that's why he's angry. He's angry because 
All these people that he's telling you he's going after, Matthew, Silent, me, Crow, other customers, it's all because those are the people that have revealed him for the scam that he is. He's angry. He's bitter. He likes to say everyone else is angry, but you don't hear people out here raging the way that he does. Watch one of his videos, that two and a half hour video, and you'll see just how deranged he sounds. He's an asshole, and he comes off that way, but that's all he has left in his repertoire. He has nothing else that he can use against anyone out here. And you've seen this, you can go to the CCB website, ccb.gov, and you can look at this information for yourself and see that he's lied all this time because he's been telling people that this is going to be a massive court case. He's going to clean Crow's clock and he's coming for the rest of us, right? But none of that's true. And the CCB can't enforce anything. They can't make you do anything. So he has nothing. This is no different than the cease and desist letter that he tried to send out there from LegalZoom. And the cease and desist letter is not a legal document. But he tried to make everybody believe it was. You can see for yourself, that document was not issued from a judge. It was just issued from an attorney's office. You play a flat fee of probably roughly around $100, $150 to have one of those sent out. And that's it. All it really does is you can use it as proof later to say, hey, I tried to get him to stop and he wouldn't. But if there's been no violation, then what does it matter? And here, Ken, there was no violation other than by you. So keep up your CCB story, Crow, Flip him the finger and go about your business and watch him continue to die. Now, I would also add in that this is an individual who just recently was going on and on about if Crow tries to come up and hug and kiss on him in the court case, that he's licensed to carry, so he's going to put Crow down like a dog. I would leave you with this. What business, folks? What business have you ever dealt with that would put out that kind of content, that would state those kind of statements? Who? All right, you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully we'll be talking to you guys soon. I've got Polaris coming up next week. So take care and be careful out there from scammers like Kenneth Bird.